Welcome to this training module, Enthalpy and HVAC Performance. In this training module, we're going to learn what is sensible and latent heat and how to calculate the sensible, latent, and total heat using some simple formulas that are easy to find either on an app or uh, to commit to memory. We'll also use these very simple formulas in the field to diagnose problems and verify that an HVAC system is performing correctly and to specification. We'll even cover some sample service calls to demonstrate how to use this training in the field. So the first thing we need to talk about is what is heat? Well, the definition for air conditioning is a process of removing heat from a desired space and rejecting it where it is not objectionable. So let's think about that for a minute. When we're air conditioning a building, we're absorbing the heat from that building through the evaporator and the blower and the duct system. And then we are carrying that heat over to the condensing unit where we are rejecting it. And that's the hot air that you feel coming off a condensing unit in air conditioning mode. Uh, but heat is a form of energy. And it's really important to understand the difference between heat and temperature. Temperature is different from heat. Temperature measures the intensity of heat. So for example, if you lit a match, that match would be very hot. But would that match be able to boil a pot of water on the stove? Well, no. And that represents the difference between heat and the intensity of heat. While that match was very hot, it doesn't have a lot of heat content to it. It can't do a lot of work. So again, heat is a form of energy. Temperature is different from heat. It measures the intensity of heat. And there are two forms of heat that we talk about uh, when it comes to comfort cooling. And that's sensible heat and latent heat. Sensible heat can be measured very easily by a simple thermometer. That's something that you're going to carry on your service truck pretty much from day one. Uh, and when we're measuring sensible heat, it's important that we understand that we're measuring what's called dry bulb temperature. The reason why it's called dry bulb is that it does not account for any moisture or wetness in the air. Uh, so it does not factor in the heat that's present in the moisture or the humidity in the air. And the unit of measurement for sensible heat is BTU per hour. And so we're going to see that unit for measurement a lot today, BTUs per hour. So the sensible heat formula is useful for calculating how much sensible heat is gained or lost. And so it's important to understand what a gain and a loss is. In the heating system, we are gaining heat. We're adding heat to the space. But when we're talking about cooling or air conditioning, we're talking about losing heat. So it would be a sensible heat loss. In order to calculate sensible heat, we need to have some information first. We need to measure temperature. And again, that temperature is dry bulb temperature. We need to be able to measure our return air temperature and our supply air dry bulb temperature. And we will also need to, as accurately as possible, measure and calculate our CFM or our airflow. There's a temperature difference that we're going to be actively interested in and that's the difference, the split between return air temperature and supply air temperature. So in order to have the temperature difference or temperature split, we need to be able to accurately measure that return air dry bulb and the supply air dry bulb temperature. So before we look at this sensible heat formula, we need to be able to understand what the symbols in that formula will mean. And it's not hard. Don't get confused or intimidated by seeing symbols that you don't recognize. The first symbol that we're going to see is Q. And that is a scientific symbol for heat energy that's used uh, in, in physics. QS is what we're going to call today the sensible heat energy. So that is the sensible heat in BTUs per pound um, that we're calculating using the sensible heat formula. So here's our formula. Our sensible heat equals our temperature difference times our CFMs times a constant of 1.08. And that constant, 1.08, will appear every time. Uh, we don't really need to go into how we calculate or how we know that 1.08 is the case. For service technicians, that's just a number that we need to remember uh, and plug into that formula every time. So let's use the sensible heat formula in a heating example. 
We're working on a gas furnace that is running a 70 degree return air temperature. Again, that's dry bulb temperature. When we measure our supply air temperature, it's 130 degrees. So that's a typical uh, gas furnace that we're going to see in the field over and over again. And when we measure our CFMs, we come up to uh, 1,200 CFMs. So what is the sensible heat output? How much sensible heat is that gas furnace uh, putting out? Well, let's plug it into the sensible heat formula. We're going to take our 60, which is the temperature difference between 70 and 130. So that's our temperature split, is 60, times 1,200 CFMs times that constant of 1.08. We'll plug that into the calculator and we arrive at 77,760 BTUs per hour. That's how much heat that gas furnace, as it's running right now, is putting out. So when we take this sensible heat formula and we compare it against the manufacturer's specifications of that furnace, is that furnace operating correctly? Well, let's say that the manufacturer specs say that it is a 100,000 BTU input furnace and that it is an 80% efficient furnace. Is it running correctly? Well, it's very easy to calculate what the performance or the output should be on that furnace. We take our input, 100,000, times our percent efficiency, which is 80% or 0.8, and we arrive at 80,000 BTUs. Now, from our sensible heat formula, we uh, said that the furnace is actually performing at 77,760. So it's very close, within 3%. Why may it be a little bit off? Why aren't we calculating exactly 80,000 BTUs uh, per hour? Well, there are a few uh, factors that are in play. For one thing, the utility company may have altered the fuel mixture a little bit. So um, that, that could be in play. The other factor is elevation. If we're really close to sea level or we're at a higher elevation, that can affect not only the heat content of natural gas, but also the airflow. And airflow measurement is very hard to be exact in the field as a technician. The instrumentation that we carry on the field to measure airflow is good, but it's not laboratory quality. So we could be a little bit off. So if you're within 5% of what your specified number is, that is acceptable and there's no reason uh, to be alarmed. In this case, we're within 3%. Uh, so we're going to move on to our next check. Now let's apply the sensible heat formula to a cooling system. So we have an air conditioning unit that's running a 75 degree return air temperature and a 55 degree supply air temperature. And when we measure airflow, we arrive at 1200 CFM. So again, using our sensible heat formula, we plug those numbers in. We have a 20 degree delta T, or temperature difference. That's 75 minus 55, is 20, times 1200 CFMs, times 1.08. We arrive at 25,920 BTUs per hour. Or when we divide by 12,000, we arrive uh, to 2.16 tons, uh, which that's really important information but sensible heat only tells us part of the story in cooling why is that the case well when we are cooling we're removing not only temperature or dry bulb heat but we're also moving removing some moisture and so sensible heat only tells us uh, one part of the story the moisture heat that's being removed has to be calculated using the latent heat formula which is what we'll discuss next